What's up, everybody? Welcome, one and all. This is Crowcast episode 75. Coming up very shortly, we got the drumming sensation, Mr. Russell Gilbrook. How are you all doing, Crow family? I can see all the comments. Ronald, how are you, brother? I'm very well. Same as you, recovering after, well, a highlight of our career so far, isn't it? It's um, tremendous weekend, mate. Absolutely tremendous. And I know we're going to dive into it a lot later when the boys yeah. come on. So anybody who's watching now or if they join, uh, we'll be talking it. Well, we'll just be recapping the whole night, really, and how the build up, how we all felt. Um, but exhausted today. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> just a little bit exhausted. Yeah. Yeah. Extremely tired. Not just because of the, uh, the amount of effort you put in for that night. You know, it's, it's the psychological, the build up of the show. You know, it's a big, it's a big show for us, Cardiff Castle. Um, the emotion, man, it was just incredible. So yeah, I get, I get the, um, tiredness and fatigue setting in now a couple of days after, like, you know, it's just, it's inevitable really, isn't it? Yeah. And, you know, I know the boys are going to add a lot to it. It was just, like I said, it was a whole build up. We'd come back from Steelhouse taking on that gig. Then every day was the build up towards that gig. And, um, just bizarre, mate. It's like slowly sinking in today as well like you know mm. so and i'm sure the boys are the same it's like you're seeing all the incredible images across the fan pages if anybody's not a member of uh those damn crows fan page please head over to there there's some incredible images of of everybody um which is just like breathtaking like you know because it's all angles covered and um yeah just a tremendous day but and uh like i said we got a lot of a lot to get through later with that um but uh, before we we move on to Cardiff Castle, we've got to talk about what's coming up as well, which is really exciting. Uh, so for anybody, there's been a lot of messages saying, where can I watch you next? Uh, we are set to go out on the road with the Wild Arts next week. Uh, two seconds. Here it is, guys. Um, but there was something I wanted to cover about this. Uh, there's a lot of confusion over the Bristol show. Now, originally, we were billed for Bristol. Um, but sadly, something's gone wrong with the venue with uh, SWX. Um, so we will not be doing that show. And we wish the guys all the best. They are kicking it off in Dover. And we actually join them um, on the 8th, which is in Manchester. So, yeah, we're heading out on the 8th of September with the Wild Arts uh, Manchester and then London and so on then. So everything is is as it was, like, you know, but... Just that Bristol date, there's been a lot of confusion over it and we're getting messages constantly because I think s still people are seeing them on pages as a shame or like the odd... Um... Yeah, I think it's been advertised on certain websites and stuff. Um, and, and people are, after the Cardiff show um, were saying, oh, I can't wait to see you in Bristol. I was like, we're not doing it. So yeah, it's a bit of confusion there. We are not doing the Bristol show. But as Ronnie said, we meet up with the Wild Arts on the 8th. Yes. And cannot wait. Yeah, and then there's no rest. Um, these, by the look of it, will be our last run of the year then, which will be starting off on the 9th of November to Derby, up to sh up to Inverness. We're not that lucky. It's not that short of a trip. It's from yeah. Derby all the way up to Inverness, uh, then back down to Sheffield, and then we end in Planet Rockstock in Puth Call. Um, so yeah, it's uh, it's a busy time, which is incredible. It's amazing to see all the bands out on the road, and things are not, but there are tickets available for that as well. I should say, there are still tickets. I know a lot of people were holding off because there was a lot of uncertainty, but everybody seems to be moving now and um, and getting back to it. Like, so yeah, if you uh, have a look at those sites, we'll put some links up. And we'll be putting individual posters and links up throughout the week as well, just so it uh, jogs everyone's memory, like, you know. Absolutely. Another thing that people have been asking about are the merch. Now, I'm stand. Look at me. Look, look check this out. Oh, look at that. <laughs> um, <laughs> these are available now online. They were only for the Cardiff Castle gig, um, but there are a few left over. So if you go to our web store right now, you can pick this up. Also. <laughs> also, exactly. Um, we did have these on sale at the castle, which went down a storm. So we've got some more of them. 
And this was a pleasant supply, supply, supplies for a lot of people. Um, the Crow Family T-shirt is out. That was available at the castle. Um, this is one of my favorites as well, Shane. Rock and Rolling Dead. Yeah. Um, yet again, was available at the castle and is now on our web store, um, along with our Lyric Tees. I think there's still some stock left of them as well. Am I right there, mate? Yeah, yeah, there's a few. Brilliant. So um, if you couldn't make the castle and wanted to buy the merch, it is available right now on a web store. Brand new hoodie and a five panel hat as well, which is cool. So that's hats, new t-shirts, all the questions you've been asking on the fan page or sending us, are they available on our web store? Yes, they are. They've all been uploaded. Everything's been counted. Everything signed, sealed and delivered soon, hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a lot, like, you know. Yeah, there's but... a, lot of, a lot of merch, man. And, and you know, the people that were queuing up for it, thank you so much. We were, we were watching backstage, you know, our heads over the fence, and we could see that queue. It was just there for hours. So, um, thank you so much. They're probably thinking, oh, shouldn't have done that. <laughs> Wait until they went online. <laughs> well, no. well, you're the first ones to wear it, put it that way. So exactly, and they're guaranteed. Um, but they are available now on the web store. There's not many of the castle ones, or I don't think we've said no. that. Uh, it is literally what was left. Um, we did have some problems with the printers, and uh, you know, because a few people there was a few sizes not there. Um, it was just all it's such an hard time. There's this, you know, I don't want to keep on harping about that because we're trying to move on, but there's still some issues within the industry, whether it be in production or etc. And especially when it comes to T-shirts and stuff, you you don't always get what you want at the moment, like, you know. So everybody is struggling ev in every sector, like. But we have managed to restock some of the sizes because so many people were disappointed. They're on our web store. Go and check them out now while they last. Should we have a guest? <laughs> Let's have a guest. Ladies and gentlemen, Crow family, please welcome the drumming machine that is Mr. Russell Gilbrook. <laughs> yes there he is there he is how are you Russ? i'm fine thank you very much thanks for um inviting me on your show fantastic stuff oh man absolute pleasure to have you fantastic. on dude so where are you so right listen now? Now listen i've got to stop by saying uh on. well done congratulations and fantastic stuff on the uh your um castle gig in your homeland, yeah. which I'm sure uh, went down well, as well as Steelhouse, the uh, reports we got back from you guys who really did kick some serious arse deal out, which was fantastic. So you're um, feeding through the industry um, just, it is, you know, we're hearing great things about you. you. Your performance was fantastic. You're a great live band, which is always a credit to any band. It's always you know, having great songs, having a good album is one thing, but if you can deliver it to your fans and to the people, well, you've got opportunity, really. Russ, thank you, man. That means a world coming from you, dude. You know, no problem. You, you, I really, really appreciate that. But, I mean, Steel House, I mean, if you want to start there, but Steel House, you headlined that. How was that for you? Well, it was a strange turn of events, but, um, yeah, I mean, we... After having 18 months off, um, yeah. which has been torture, as it has for the world of the music business. I mean, absolute torture. I, mean, I don't mind telling anybody, I hit lows like you wouldn't believe. I've never hit them in my life ever as a human being. And uh, to wait for the time to get out and play in front of people again, because music... There isn't a quality like music that touches people, the connection that you have. Um, it's something when it's taken away like that, my God almighty, it, you may as well have died. It is incredible. Mm -hmm. And to come back and play such fantastic um, gigs and certainly with the Steel House, the people, it was like having your own family party. I mean, yes. the, the, yeah. the joy, the, the embrace... Uh, embracement from everybody and just that whole feel of they were ready for it and they'd been suppressed themselves for so long. It was, oh, it was, I can't tell you just how 
fantastic it, it was i actually had tears in my eyes i think after the first song um because i couldn't believe that we were back doing something that we were waiting for you know we were top three months initially that we'd have to wait and it went on and on and on and on and on i didn't know it was coming back yeah. i didn't know who was going to survive it so it was a very emotional and beautiful uh, moment to come back there and uh, as i said wales is just fantastic the people just love it mate so it's yeah. joy yeah, mate, I, I I I sense the same th- sort of thing when we were on stage. I've never been in a situation where I have felt so connected with the audience because every mm. single person on the planet has been through this shit. And and yes, it was it was literally I felt exactly the same as the person in the front row, the, the fifth row back. You know, we were all on the same page. It was truly some in that that gig in in the steel house. So yeah, totally uh, echo what you said there, bro. It was a special one. And and to and to you know. The, the, the um, all the promoters that have managed to get their um, festivals up and running a yeah. huge thanks to them because they've gone through hell. They've made it work. They've been supported by the fans. They've been supported by the management, the artists, the promoters, the crew. Everybody has to have a huge round of applause to try and get things up and running again. So it's fantastic all around. Yeah. Well, we've been learning that, to be honest, Russell, where... You think, right, okay, everybody's back now. Absolutely brilliant. And the crew get back. You know, there's been a lot of them suffering, had to get other jobs to survive. And um, and you think, right, this is great. And then you realise, no, it is back. But, you know, we can't get this amount of staging because there's X amount of festivals happening all at the same time now. Or, mm. you know, even, even vans or everything has just become so much harder. So you are right to get it over the line. And, and especially mm. some of the bills that we're seeing happening at the moment to, to coordinate that and bring it all together. You're right. It is a, it is a round of applause, but they like, you know, and we, we laughed, we did a, the first gig back was the, the download pilot. And I know there was a lot of technical issues behind the scenes and stuff, but we were saying not just the crew have had time off, not just the bands, the gear has been put away for like 18 months. Like, you know, uh, yeah. it's, it's crazy yeah. when you just think about the most, minuscule thing it's different for like myself or you or the boys bring out the keyboards the the pianos the 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 guitars the drum kits in the house or you or you lock up but some of these some of these leads and etc have just been in cases for like 18 months and all dusted and you know what i mean it's it's fucking mental mate how um just everything just stopped like you said so and you hit, I you, know. you said you hit some lows did you did you not manage to see anybody were you were you isolated more or yeah, um, I mean, it, it, I, I mean, you know, I don't mind um, telling anybody. I don't care. I shoot from the hip. I tell people exactly the way it is. You know, I hit rock bottom. I hit the bottle hard. Um, I had really, really bad times. And um, I got out of it. But I really feel sorry for a lot of people that perhaps didn't get out of it. And a lot of people that went through the same times as me. Because, you know, it, it's a very... I can explain it. It is your life. It's your life. I've been playing drums since I was two. I, mm. I started having lessons at four, earning money at six, doing the West End shows in London when I was 12. It's been my whole life. And when someone completely wipes that away from you and then locks you in your house, you can't go here, can't go there, can't do that. Um, where do you go? What do you do? There's no way out. There's no light at the end of the tunnel. And it's very, very emotional. Um, and I'm just so pleased that we've got to where we've got. Um, and for everybody's sake, as I said, you know, for the fans, for people in general, music is such an important therapy yeah. for artists, for um, the fans, for people, for man, for everybody involved in the whole thing of it, which is, let's not forget, it's a multi-million pound business that got ignored by so many governments for so many stupid wrong reasons. They suppressed the one of the most beautiful things yeah. that gets people out of depression and out of their problems. Uh, and so it became a very difficult thing. But anyway, that was that. This is now, we will kick it off. And we can't <laughs> wait to go forward right, and giving people back what they've missed. Yeah, uh, but I I love that. But I just to go back half a step. Don't you find that you were still drumming though? Were you in the isolation? No, not at all. No, I wasn't. I didn't I drum for ask, a year. 
I wanted to ask her because there's a lot of musical friends that we got. We're we're very fortunate and we've managed to like like I got li- drums in the background here, built a little home studio. I had to adapt it in COVID, man, because it was driving mm. me nuts. I got a V kit, which is nothing wrong with electric drums, but I just wanted to play a real kit, like course, and you yes. know that vibe where you're like, I yeah. just want to just want to hit metal and fucking just want to hit, you know what I mean? So yeah. um and like the boys manage with they all got home studios you can see with Shane and the other boys, but mm-hmm. yeah, I know so many musicians who were like, No, I didn't get the chance, especially drummers. It's hard for drummers as well. Who if you haven't got um a home studio or or access to a lockup, especially in that environment, it must mm-hmm. have drove you fucking stir crazy like you know it's um yeah well, yeah but as i said it was a really it was because potentially everyone thought it was going to be a short amount of time of isolation or lockdown mm. it went on and on and on and the more it went on the more depressed you got and then because there was no like well when can we do this oh we might not be able to do this it well why should i do it it became that to me it was like well why why the hell have i got to try and find out of practice when I don't even know when I'm going to be playing next. Yeah. Because it got to the stage of this could be never. So what the hell is the point? And um, if it goes, what the hell is the point with drink? The drink exaggerates, but well, there's no point then. And yeah. you start going down a rabbit hole, which is yeah. what I did because I saw my life being cut off so drastic mm. that I had nothing. I couldn't practice. I had no reason to practice. What am I practicing for? There's no gigs. What am I practicing for? I've got no recordings. I've got nothing. I've, I've got nothing. So yeah. it literally was a bit of a, a knockback. But um, yeah. I did end up getting myself together. Um, and then I did end up doing a few recordings for different artists and bits and pieces. And slowly things started to get a little. When I first went back, I, I can't tell you. You don't have <laughs> Don't matter how good you are as a player, mate. You have a year off. You <laughs> notice you have a year off. Yeah. And my, my brain was going one, two, three, four, and my body was going maybe one, maybe two and a half. Three, <laughs> three. And after the first two hours, I was going, do I know how to do this shit or what? What's going yeah. on here? Yeah. But after after that, I got into it, and then I, I got the buzz back. And then um, it started to open up a little bit. And then we've got the album, obviously, we're working on this. So I had a lot of time to do some writing and bits and pieces and sort things out. So that sort of forced me through the lull. And um, now we're, now we're hopefully, I hope, we're out and we're going to be going forward and forward and forward. And uh, nice things are going to happen. So what was the first live show, Russ, you did back? In Finland. In Finland, we had we had uh, um, was it Finland? <laughs> I can't remember now. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, because we're doing pre-production, my yeah, head is yeah. like song, 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 arrangement, 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 arrangement. I can't remember what the first week was. Because um, <laughs> you did, you did steal no, did, did you do steal Then go to Finland and. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I was trying to work out because I knew you were in Finland. Because that's right, we had there. yeah, we had some festivals in Finland to do, and Steel House was among them. And I think yeah. Steel House was the first show we did. Right. So the first one back was Steel House, and then we flew out to Finland. So yeah. we ended up having a rehearsal of which um, you have like um, a whole day's rehearsal, but with this bad, it never happens like that. So we had like a three a three hour rehearsal. <laughs> After not playing for 18 months, and then we went and did the live show at Steel House. That was it. Steel House was the first show, yeah, and it was incredible. Um, and then we literally flew out the following week. Um, we had two shows in Finland, two festivals, came back for a week, flew out and did three festivals. And of course, every time we did, it was great going through Heathrow, there's no one there. It's straight through <laughs> security. Fucking <laughs> great, brilliant. Yeah. Um, but we actually obviously have to do the old PCR test, all that bit. So when we got to Finland, we had to do their PCR test in the hotel to go back for their check-in so we can get out. But, of course, everything was uh, fine. It was all negative for us. That was the only palaver. Everything else was a, a dream. No queues at security and everything like that. It was fantastic. And, and again, in Finland, they were um, absolutely... You know, ecstatic that, yeah, of course, they can get out and listen to music. 
Yeah, I've seen some of the photos, man. It looked brilliant. Yeah. Uh, it was right. So that was, that was great, great fun. And now we're in pre production, which is going fantastic. And um, we record the next hour. Well, basically, we're doing pre production a couple of weeks, go home for a week, come back, and record for three weeks with a fantastic Jay Ruston producer that's good mates with Andy Sleep. Um, and then um, wait for the record coming to release it in the next 10 years. I mean, <laughs> you know, record, record companies have their, their power to say whatever they want to say. The main thing is we're going to put down some great tracks with a great producer and hopefully produce an album that the uh, fans and newcomers will thoroughly enjoy, as you guys well know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you're excited, but you, the stuff you hear in the room right now is getting you buzzed? Oh, I tell album. you what, the drums sound fantastic. Yes. Um, the drum, obviously the drum room make the drums sound fantastic. So I'm just like, oh, my God. I wish people, all oh, the people would understand. So I'm putting down some killer tracks. The arrangements are sounding great. The guys are playing great. We're all excited about the, the new tracks. There's never not a problem there's not arguments it's not arrangement issues it's all going down really nice and smoothly uh, so i'm very very excited i just can't wait because i picked jay up from the airport uh, on the 12th and um we'll have a little chat coming up here and he's fans he's old school he's fantastic don't have to play to a click if you don't want i nearly fell over sideways <laughs> <laughs> no damping on the kit i nearly fell over the other side it was unbelievable i couldn't hang on can you say that again so <laughs> click isn't uh, important and damping the drums down so they sound like cardboard crap. I was like, flipping hell, this guy would have marry you. You know <laughs> what I mean? So um, it's great to work with someone like And also the drum fills. I said, you know, I've got a few there with drum fills I might have to put in. Is that, if they're in time, you can do what you like. Hang on a minute. Is this, is this reality? <laughs> it's brilliant. <laughs> so, Looking forward to that. Yeah, it's going to be great. Oh, man, that sounds amazing. Uh, like, you know, because it, it's, it's one of those things, but, you know, you've been in the game a long time, you experience, you know what you're doing, obviously. But I suppose coming back now and doing an album straight off the back of this 18 months, you know, sitting on the bench, so to speak, all that passion now, all that energy right. is going straight into that album, dude. That's exactly right. The good thing about the lockdown was we had, obviously, time to write because on the yeah. road, it's very difficult to allocate time, which record companies don't understand. But yes, you're quite right. I mean, we want to make a killer album and all of that suppressed yeah. energy, passion, emotion has come out in the songs, in the playing. And I think that's going to work in the favor. Let's hope. Yeah. Well, I can't believe it, but. Sold. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm sold. I'll buy it. So you, so you said you're having a week off, then three weeks recording the record. Is that the live done for the rest of the year, or are you are you still going to pop out? Because, I mean, you were supposed to be doing the record, and you just played Stone Dead on the weekend, didn't you? Fair play. You ended up headlining, which is well, that's yeah. brilliant to hear that. We heard that. See, we were like, you're right, a heap of step in. It was like, I thought they were recording their record. <laughs> I know. Well, it was a little bit of to and froing on it because black star riders with the, the covid thing it's yeah. a bit on off on off on off and you know they got the same um management as us and we'd originally got asked about it and of course we said yes but because of the obviously you know a promoter wants a certain band and a band wants to play you, you, you're trying your best to make that work so tentatively we said yes we would be prepared to do it of course we would um a little bit on and off and obviously we were here and then it came up yes can you can you do it um and it wasn't really that difficult for us to just strike down some of the gear here and move it there um but obviously it, it was a great thing for us to step in oh, that's amazing and do the the festival which we've never done before um and we had a few technical issues the poor boys there uh struggled a bit with the the stage because the uh, a couple of guys that were going to rig the big stage had uh, some COVID issues, so they had to end up getting a smaller stage, and it caused a few issues in this and the other. But great festival again, superb festival. The people there are phenomenal, mate. I tell you what, a lot of obviously volunteers and that, but they really do. They're so polite, they're so 
warm and friendly and everything. And it make you know what it's like when you do a gig. It's not just the artist or the crew or the management. It's everybody in the team. It's from the guy that lets you in on the stage door. Yes. If everybody gets on with everybody, it makes it smooth running. Then the whole ship works great, and it becomes a very enjoyable moment or gig or whatever it is. Yeah. But it was great to do Stone Dead. Uh, we just quickly took days out, came back here, and as I said, we full on again. Um, we're down. We've done her. Uh, how many tracks we done? Oh, we've done ten. We're just about to do eleven. And um, I go home. The boys go home. Week off. Pick the producer up. Come back. Do it for real. <laughs> um, try and create and capture that because yeah. I always like the the first things because after the third and fourth thing it becomes a bit really you know what's going to happen yeah but when it's really raw the magic is still firing around isn't it yeah you know and uh, so hopefully we can capture some of that and, and turn out a great record let's hope we we did it a bit different on our last record, Russell. We um and for me as a drummer, it was it was such a really good vibe. Um, so when we went to Andy's, he had we had two kits set up. So we had one in the rehearsal room, and then one which they'd done all the mic in. And you know you're not there for hours, just fucking hitting the snare drum. Every everything mm. was done. And then when we were doing the pre-production, or we were just going over the certain songs, etc. If there was something quite not right, we get it to that point. You know when there's like a real a buzz and an energy and, and 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 like I keep saying electricity to the song where it's that mm. new song vibe and you got that adrenaline as a drummer because you're like oh well, that sounds fucking great though I'm gonna push for there I'm gonna as soon as they yeah. felt that essence was there you could see like they were like right get into the other room let's go and record so we would go in hot then and before I would like calm down we'd we'd almost capture, capture a it. lot oh man it was such a cool way of doing it um yeah. And I'm open to recording anyway. I just really enjoyed that because you, the boys could see me walking around and it was almost like the right amount of time to let me settle, but not too much because I was still, still fucking pumped. Fired up, you know? up. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, 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 and it, And it was well, right think... off the back of that, like I said, that new song vibe. If there was like little arrangement changes or anything we were doing different, it was just like, right, everyone happy, bang, get the drummer in there now. And you're like, fucking right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think, I think... You know, when you play live, the whole point of playing live is how good a band plays together to put across a song that hasn't had too much production on it where they can't portray what they've done in studio live. But in a recording, I totally agree, in recording, you're trying to capture the magic and any tricks in the trade that help an artist or a band collectively capture that magic moment because once it's on record that's it it's yeah. done a done deal you've got rewind here again you've got rewind here again and what you hear is what you hear you can't do anything about it um and i think that's just that's always been this the hardest thing to capture with rock bands is the organic sound of a, a rock band playing together mm -hmm but also the magic of the chemistry that works within that band. If you can capture that, because that relates. When something's funny and we all laugh because we're human, when it's something sad, we all cry because we're human. And that's what music should do. It hits the emotions. Joe Bloggs doesn't know why, but you're hitting their emotion. And if you can do that musically, to me, that's a winning formula. So I agree with what you said. You found a formula to try and create and don't lose that magic. That's what you do. Yeah, yeah. Do you record rest? So, how, how are you doing this album? Are you recording all together as a band, or you? Yeah. Are you, yeah. So the backing so, track goes down as a band. Yeah. So that so that we can create um, the correct feel and vibe and magic as a backing track, and then obviously other aspects will go on top. But the main core, because to me, it's all about the groove. The yeah. energy that has to be done as a band. You can't do it as a as an individual. Yeah. Not, not when you're putting the backing track down. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, that's cool. And you said earlier you started playing drums at two. Is that yeah, correct? I was just yeah, I was just crawling around. Um, and I, I used to get little plastic um uh, bowls out with two tablespoons and start tapping to the melody melody of the uh uh, songs on the radio and stuff. 
And uh, I was born with club feet. See, I was born with my feet upside down and inside out. So my feet had to be broken and reset. So I can't play bass drums like normal people because I've got no pivot in my foot. I have to play like um, like that, basically. So my oh. um, my um, when I'm sitting down, I just raise my leg and put it down. I can't I can't do this. I can't do a pivot. Um, but so I used to drag myself around, and my dad played piano um, semi professionally, but he was a good player. And when he used to tap his foot when he's playing for the time, I used to go over there and put my hands on it. And then when my mum did the hoovering, I used to crawl over and put my head on the hoover because of the vibrations. And that's really what set them off to say, oh, I might have a drummer here. So they took me for lessons when I was four. And I started, and I started having lessons when I was four. And as I said, I was in a band when I was six, earning £30 a week. And then I was doing <laughs> Jesus Christ Superstar at the West End when I was 12, sight reading it. I couldn't do it now, but I could do it back then. And I got taught how to read music. And reading music to me was... Nothing, it meant nothing to me. But I read music and I played well, but it didn't mean anything. And I got my ass roasted by my teacher who gave me a, a high profile professional gig. And I went in and I nailed the reading and I thought I'd done great. I was like 16 years old, oh, I nailed that. And they turned around and said, I was shit. I went, I went and let my, my next lesson, and Bob turned around and said, you were shit. I went, I nailed it. He said, yes, you did, but you played shit. What do you mean? I'm going to teach you about feel now, boy. And that's what it was. I played all the right notes, but they meant nothing. So he gave me Steely Dan and Toto and, you know, and Motown and this, that, and the other. Understand why they play what they play, how they do it, to understand how to create and make people do If people don't do that, it's got nothing. It ain't swinging, it ain't grooving. You've got to learn to swing and groove. You'll always win the day if people are moving their heads. And then I, I so I honed it. So all the time I've been learning how technique and playing and reading and doing everything right, but not playing music, not swinging and grooving. And then um, I learned how to do that, and it completely, it was a game changer for me, obviously. You know what I mean? That's the yeah. To me, it was like, well, I'm not interested in technique now because at the end of the day, it's about the swing and the groove. Of course it is. That's incredible. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, so I, I, the fact that you you instinctively had the percussion you were interested as a kid, because mm. normal people, when we ask well, what what's your influences, they normally say, oh, I listen to the radio, I watch TV, or I went to a gig and I hear this, but you had the instinctive, I don't know, rhythm, I guess. Yeah, that's like right. Kid. That's and then mom, from the bands later on after it. Yeah, I mean, I was literally the opposite. You know, I was literally crawling around and tapping on plastic bowls. And obviously after quite a few months of that, mum and dad had a little chat and said, well, wait a minute, I think we've got a bit of a drummer in the house because he keeps doing this. He keeps holding my foot like that. And he keeps going over the vibrations on the hoover. You know, and I can't be influenced at two years old, for Christ's sake. I don't know anything. Yeah. And so it was at four, I had my first lesson. And um, it, it went on from then. And even at four, even at six, the only person I looked up to was my my dad and my drum teacher, because at that age, I'm not going to listen to bands. I don't know what, what, the, what the bands, I don't know, understand music at that age properly. Yeah. So I just idolised my teacher because he played fantastic uh, instrument that I wanted to learn. And obviously my dad, because him being my dad and um, me getting rhythm from him playing and stuff, you see. So that's how it went, really. So wow. I didn't. And, and to this day, when people ask me about influences, I have to say I don't have an influence. I well, can't not have an influence. Well, I don't have an influence because I went from, you know, I, I was playing with famous people when I was a kid. You know, and I just fell into playing drums and moving into this gig and doing that show and, and, and that cabaret and that TV and that recorder, but I just fell into it. And then when I started to understand more about drumming, you know, the people, I loved Harvey Mason as a drummer. I loved Buddy Rich. I loved Louis Belson, Gene Krupa, Baby Dodds. I love Simon Phillips, Vinnie Cullis. And I love everybody. I love how the drums sound. 
It's the drum sound that works for me, not jazz, rock, punk, none, nothing to do with that. It's for how people play an instrument or how an artist. But I, I love um, Earth, Wind and Fire as much as I love Black Sabbath. Yeah. yeah. yeah for yeah, different yeah. reasons. For different reasons. You know, because mu music hits me as a whole thing, not a, a segment of something, you know? Yeah. That's why I've done all those gigs. You know, I toured with Europe's number one jazz and blues guy, Chris Barber, for five years. I did Alan Price from The Animals for six years, Van Morrison. You know, I did a, a demo with uh, Tony Iommi. I've gone, I lit the large show, The Comedians. I mean, I've done nearly every gig known to man, and I've loved every single bit of it because they've all given me something that's unique to their own little thing. And it's helped me create myself, I hopefully, as a musician that I am now. When yeah. I did the first yeah. album with Uriah Heat, we had one song that was a shuffle, Tears of the World, and we were struggling for a, a bit in the middle. And I said, uh, I'd only been in the band two weeks. I went, can I do an Afro-Cuban 6-8 in the middle? <laughs> like, what? <laughs> Afro-Cuban 6-8 in the middle? I went, just play it. So I played <laughs> It's in there. It's on their album. Love so it. that's why I, it's another thing. I don't believe in styles of music. I believe that what you play fits what you're doing at the moment. So I'm playing Afro Cuban six eight in a classic rock band. So it doesn't make the Afro Cuban six eight Afro Cuban. It just makes that rhythm, syncopated rhythm, fit in a classic rock setting. Yeah, yeah. So that's yeah. why I like all of the all of the rhythms, not styles, rhythms. And you apply them if they're needed with what you're doing. <laughs> yeah. uh, but I love that. That's that's not drumming. That's a musician. Do you know what I mean? That's hearing yeah. what's right yeah. for the song as opposed to chess. Correct. But if you don't, if you're someone that's a bit naive to the fact that you can get something out of jazz or punk or, you know, reggae or what, if you don't open your ears up to all that, you haven't got those ingredients to put in yeah. that you might need that makes the song sound great oh, i love it but love it I, mean, I can't wait for this album now what else what's on this album any any um out there sort of rhythms you thinking hang on that shouldn't be in there shouldn't work but it does oh the afro cuban six eights in there again yeah. because the thing about it the thing about it it works in six eight it works in four four it works in shuffle anything triplet you've got that. And it's got such a swing about it that it can be half time, full time. But the way in which it goes to giggle, it allows that triplet feel to work. So yeah. it has its moment to, to um, make a certain groove that you're going to play different. To just because you can't just keep going, you know what I mean? There's only one way yeah, to yeah. do that, yeah. you know, a shuffle. But when you're going, it just breaks it up a bit and gives it a, a flavor that's yeah. quite nice, yeah. I love that. We're gonna to have to try one of that, Ron. I think. <laughs> I love I love Latin bass beats and stuff like that. Yeah. We we um we did the demo in lockdown and that kind of starts with a bit of a like I said it to Shane. The first thing I said to him was, "Can you feel the dance?" Like, and that's how I explain it to him because yeah. as as I was playing, it's got a like a like a snap to it. A dun da dun da dun da dun da, and I was like, you know, I can imagine people people kind of boogieing like you know you just yeah. imagine that 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 fucking dance like you know mm. so or like you said the head's got a bob or the foot's got a tap right. um mm. so yeah i love stuff like that or, the, or good, the good the good thing about bringing unusual rhythms in is it makes the other musicians yeah. Yeah, yeah, play yeah. something different and that's the cool thing because if you don't bring in a rhythm that they don't know you're left with what they only know and it's what you've probably done before but yeah. if you give them a different rhythm that they're not used to, it forces them to play a different part. And sometimes that is so cool. Yeah, yeah. 
no, I, I get that. I get that. I get that. I mean, it's cool because I'm, I'm listening to you by there now. And I said it to Shane when we were speaking a few weeks ago. And he said, oh, Russell, come on. And I'm uh, brilliant. I said, the first time I'd seen you wasn't actually in a band. It was, I remember a few years ago when you were doing the the, the lessons on Sky. And oh, right. Yeah. I'm, because I don't know, because of my attention and stuff, I find it hard to watch stuff like that. But you were... Like straight away now, I can I can tell what you're saying, and I'm I'm zoned in on it. And you were mm. brilliant to watch on on that as well. How you came across because you're not that's no dis disrespect to a lot of drummers, but some of them are very they they're so theory based, and it's quite um, clinical how they're speaking, and mm. and everything's a little bit vanilla. Do, do you know what I mean? Yeah. I think that's the nicest yeah, way. Do, yeah. They're incredible mm. at what they do, but with you, there's there's an excitement to how you're you're saying it, and to anybody who's trying to improve or level up, you're you're mm. engaged with that then because you're making mm. them feel excited. Like that's the best way I can I can explain it. Like so, yeah. To, to, to me, the most important thing about any learning process is the engagement. Because mm. if someone switches off, they're not going to do it. It's as simple as that. And I'm I'm known in the music business. I don't know whether you know. I'm known in the music business as being the rebel of drumming. I'm afraid because I don't believe in rudiments. I learned them. I got taught them when I was a kid. I got the American Twenty Six Rudiments. But as a drummer, I'm afraid I only think there's two, which are singles and doubles, because everything yeah. else is a combination of. And I've been ridiculed by a certain amount of people over a lot of years about it. But it is it's simply a fact that it's all about singles and doubles. And I'm trying to channel people to realise that you need a small amount of technical ability that you focus on to create the big book. It's a small thing that creates the big thing. Instead of giving someone the big thing and they get the small thing amount out of it because it's too big for them to sort out. Mm -hmm. And if people get their heads round that you learn this to get that, it's a much easier concept for people to understand, oh, hang on a minute, I'd sooner learn one page to get good than 500 pages, right, to be have a nightmare with. And yeah. that's my philosophy. And the only reason I'm passionate about it is because it's what I did. I had the 500 pages, and it was a nightmare. And I realised that it all came out of the one page, and I got better quicker as a result. Because if you've got two things to think about, or 40 things to think about, which book are you going to pick up? Yeah. The one with two. Why would you pick up the one with 40? Because yeah. you don't need to have loads of info to be good. What you need is the right foundation to grow, <laughs> in my opinion. Yeah. You know, so yeah. Yeah. I'm just yeah. trying to make and my enthusiasm is because I want people, it's hard enough as it is to learn any instrument, even to sing well, to play the guitar well, to do anything well, it's hard. So if you can make it simple, with great results, then people will buy into it, I feel, will buy into it easier than to make it a minefield of complications that they turn away from. Yep. Oh, mate, no, I, I couldn't agree more. I couldn't agree more. The fact that you're, you've put that in literally layman's terms as well, you know, you're understanding mm. what it takes in order to progress as a musician. Um, what you said there. I remember watching you when, um, when we did the Cozy Powell bash with Bob, and, oh, yeah. Um, yeah, and you sitting behind the kit, but I was just, I was looking at you like, and just, you love every second of it. You're like, every hit, every, you mm. your eyes, you, you just love it, dude. And, oh, and I, I love that when drummers, you know, I don't particularly mm. like drummers where they're just like, everything is perfect and it's just, they're barely moving. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I, there's no vibe, is there? There's no vibe. I, I look yeah. at you and you're just having the best time, which makes me one of the best mm. time. And um, I love that, musicians, and that's an abundance with you, bro. Mm. No, thank you. I appreciate that. It's, it's something that I'm glad that it's actually in me. I couldn't, I couldn't actually play. If you asked me to play like that and stay yeah. like that, I couldn't do it because yeah. I can't feel music like that. Music makes me want to be more animated than that, and I have to do it. And I certainly know that that feeds off to my musicians and feeds off to the audience. Yeah. Well, that's the whole job of being in a band, to feed to your musicians and to yeah. connect with the audience. Why wouldn't you do it? But yeah. I understand as well that some people haven't got that, um, say, personality or flamboyancy in their uh, body. Um, that's no, not a put down. 
but I just feel as though it's a, perhaps a, a little bonus for me because I love it. I absolutely adore getting stuck into that audience. And yeah, when it's aggressive, I get fucking aggressive. I'm telling them all the fucking shits under the sun and everything. But they get it. And when they get it, I get the vibe. I need to have them reacting to what I'm doing to make me get better, to them to react, for me to do that, for them to react. It's a snowball effect, isn't it? That's why we yeah. do it. Absolutely, yeah. bro. That's incredible. Have you have you got any tips as well for any drummers? Like, because obviously when when you met up with the Uriah Heap guys and stuff like that, is there any tips to when you're jo joining a big band or how to how to to make an impression or? Yeah, preparation, preparation, preparation. Get your shit together, right? Mm. The Uriah Heap auditions for five songs to learn. I learned the whole live set. I'm the only one that did it. And I walked in there, did the audition. I said, I can do the live show tomorrow. Huh? <laughs> That's incredible. Because at the end of the day, most auditions, you get one shot. Yeah. Well, if you don't prepare yourself, you're not going to get another shot. <laughs> so what you've got to do, first of all, you have to have 100% confidence in what you've got to portray as yourself. So... The water line mustn't go there because you're going to make mistakes and you won't pass. The water yeah. line's got to be way down here so you can play with confidence and you know what it is you're going to do. You know the song's inside out so you're not struggling there because the more you know a song, the more you can relax and play and dig in. Um, and that air of authority as a drummer feeds to the other musicians. You get a drummer in there that Okay, mate, you're gonna, you, oh, you're gonna count it, and okay, I'll wait for you. No, what? You want to tell to count? Well, hang on a minute, I'll tell you where the beat is. One, two, one, two. You know what I mean? Because yeah. what they settle then, the rest of the band settles because you've taken command. It it, it boosts your confidence, but it boosts their confidence, knowing that someone's really directing the ship and going to make it work solidly. Yeah. And if you understand your capabilities, technically wise, and you've got a great groove and you've got those other things I've just said, that's all part of the preparation you go in. It's no good going in, not knowing half the stuff, forgetting the arrangements, um, not being able to play it with heat, right? You wouldn't believe the amount of drummers who can play a double shuffle. You know why? Because they've got a weak hand. They can't go da 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 the weekend's not good enough. I mean, for goodness sake, it's a technical flaw. Well, there we go. If you're going to go for an audition, there shouldn't be no technical flaws. You're not going to get it, are you? It's quite yeah. simple. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, preparation, understanding, authority, confidence, go above and beyond. If you want that gig, you go above and beyond like I did. I learned the whole live set and learned five songs and some of them didn't even do that. Well, what's that going to tell you? Yeah. Already, I'm going to win the day just by saying I've learned the whole life debt without playing. I'm going to win the day. Yeah. Because yeah. it proves that I want it. They, that's the sort of answers you want from someone. Someone yeah. that really is into it and means it and wants it. So, Do you know what, dude? After listening to you talk now, I totally get why, you know, lockdown was so hard for you, bro. Because the way you're talking mm -hmm. about drumming and music, it's a mm -hmm. new, but it's like you can just mm -hmm. see how passionate you are, bro. Oh, I love it. <laughs> love it, man. Love it. Mm. Absolutely incredible. So when is this album out then, Russ? Do we know yet? Or <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, maybe 2023. Right, right okay. <laughs> um, just logistics of record company. Obviously, they yeah. will decide on the correct time, but we've heard whispers of that. Just simply because I think what's happening is, don't forget our official 50th anniversary tour should have been 2020. Right. Because it was 70, 1970 when the band started officially. So the yeah. proper 50 years is 2020, but because of the COVID thing, it got postponed to 21. And because of 21, it's now postponed to 22. Yeah. So obviously there doesn't want to be a conflict of the 50th anniversary tour of the new album. I see. Yeah. Obviously there's always an ongoing 
uh, talk about trying to combine the two. But at the moment, we're not quite sure exactly when the release date will be. We just want to get the, the album recorded where everyone's happy. Then we can present it and hopefully they can decide then on a format and a structure to try and release it a, a, a nice time to coincide possibly with the 50th or whatever they want to do it. Ah, fantastic, bud. Exciting times. I love it. Yeah. The music, yeah. Uh, but it's been an absolute I just want to go, I just want to go, you know, it's not always about me. I just want to hear about you guys. I'm <laughs> interested in you guys. You guys are doing some great stuff at the moment. I am hearing a lot of great stuff uh, from you guys. So what's in the pipeline with you? What's going on with your album and all these bits and pieces? Uh, thank you, man. Um, no, it's, um, it's going well, dude. Uh, we've, we're already in the studio writing. Um, we're talking with producers, which one's going to come on board. Uh, so we're just sending off some demos to certain people and see who's, you know, getting the vibe and working out who we're going to work with. But yeah, we've got several demos done. Um, new album probably next year. Uh, released at some point um, and hopefully you know as you said after covid now next year is going to be where we got a shitload of gigs and we can promote the hell out of this new record um but yeah mm. it's, it's going very well dude thank you for asking brilliant and you uh, um, i'd like to say i hope all you guys stay like a great family as a band don't let anything interfere with your what you've got going on now because it's obviously working you want to keep that going Oh, yeah, man, you, you, you hit the nail on the head, dude. We we we're so aware of that, Russ. Um, it's a fucking hard game, dude, and you know what? With this this industry we're in, so anything can tear you apart. Literally, like it could be the stupidest thing as well, you know. Mm, um, right. but we are so aware of that. But that's great advice. Any bands out there? There's nobody. So, when you go on the road, there's nobody more important than the, the members of your band in that room. Anybody else can right. go and disappear. So when you go on the road. The whole dynamic of that person changes. You know what I mean? Because you're now living with them, and yeah. the personal habits, the real person comes out, everything like that. So to try and stop the habits that might irritate someone, you've always got to try and find things that just you know you can put away here and do that, and put headphones on and do it. Because you know the things that upset so many bands, apart from musical differences, which can't help, is you know someone's habit that irritates you when you're on a six week tour or a 10 week tour. So, yeah. You know, my, my greatest advice is, you know, love each other so much and the irritating bits, they can't help who they are, but just offset them so that it becomes a workable situation. Ah, that's, that's it. That's, that's it. Tremendous. Man. That's experience. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. That's, that's, ex ah, mate, that's spot on Bob on. That's incredible. Incredible. But I can't I think, wait to share a glass of wine or a, a pint of beer with you. Are you drinking no. now, dude? That, that glass of wine? Have you drunk it? Oh, has he gone? There it is. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. <laughs> uh, but, you know, no, no, you know, obviously I come to Wales a lot because of uh, my fantastic fiancé, Chris. So, you know, hopefully we might be able to get together for a lunch or whatever when we're up there next. It'd be great. You know, hang yeah. out, talk music. You know, yeah, we love it. She she is an encyclopedia of music anyway, um, and you know we'd have great fun. It'd be, it'd be great to catch up with you guys on a personal level and have a have a, a chat and a dinner with a catch up. Make uh, any time, honestly. Uh, and this, like, like as you know, there's some beautiful parts of Wales. So yeah, nice oh, bit of lunch, stunning. nice glass of wine. Yeah. And um, yeah, we def definitely will be picking your brains for uh, the do's and don'ts. And I think any band should do that. See, it's, you should mm -hmm. never be afraid to ask a question or, oh. or to take advice. And and that's the only way we feel we can level up. We keep saying that. Any band that we play with, any band we, we're lucky enough to share a stage with, we're always looking what we can take away from that. Um, you know, what are they doing? What are they doing differently? What's their production doing? What's their looking always looking around seeing what what you can improve your own stuff with and, and keep moving keep moving it forward and like you said earlier most importantly is is staying together that's that's the main the main thing listen like, you know, in so. this business you can have everything one day and nothing the next and that's why you have to have great management you've got to be the strongest bond as a band and exactly what you said there you've got to take 
note of all the right things that have, uh, are going to keep you going on the, the rise all the time. Uh, because once you get knocked down, mate, very few people come back once it's over. So it's very important to write great music, have lots of fun, admire and adore your fans, because without them, you've got nothing. Treat your management like family, because they should treat you like family and ride the roller coaster. Yeah. Russ, that's incredible advice, dude. Thank you so much. You're a class act, brother. Thank you so much for joining no us. Well, thank you for inviting me. It's been fantastic. Real, real pleasure. All right. Enjoy your time with the boys, mate. Get that week off and uh, can't wait for that album, The Same Machine. Now, I really can't wait. Yeah. And I'll be listening out for that, that Cuban. I'll be listening out for that. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you do. Listening out for that. Incredible. Pleasure, Russell. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks, Take care, brother. Cheers, Russ. Cheers. Okay. Oh man, that was that was incredible. Absolutely incredible. What a lovely guy. And I meant that like genuinely. I remember years ago seeing him on that Sky Channel. That was the first time I seen him. I, I didn't I didn't know about anybody anybody he played with. Obviously, we know now, and we we get to know the musicians in the scene. But yeah, man, just a completely charismatic, but somebody you can engage with. Shane, from a drummer's point. It's yeah. so fucking hard. I always say to you, man, I always look at like front men um, to, to, to kind of get that energy. Or I, I respect so many front men, so many drummers where technically they're, they're incredible and far beyond my capabilities. But it's that excitement. It's what drives you, what drives you to be better, what drives you to bring more to your band, uh, what, what gives you the energy to go away on your own and, and level up yourself like, you know, and um. Russell is in that category. I mean, you know, I watched him a few years ago when they played Steel House, and I said, he's fucking, look at that, like, he's, you know, he, you can tell he's, he's smashing the drums, but there's there's so much thought going into what he's playing, but so much enjoyment, and that's what I love about whether it's a drummer, a guitarist, a singer, it's the passion that's behind it, like, when you leave it all on the stage, as you would say, like, you know? Yeah, and, but what's more impressive is just the the person really behind it behind the kit because he, he's just come on by there now and i i did the cozy bar uh powell bash and there were some incredible artists on that stage right so you're immediately not intimidated but you're looking at like, what they've done what they've achieved and you're like oh you know they, they these like he said know your stuff prep they know they've been in the game so long they know their shit and so I was a bit sort of apprehensive talking to people, you know, who am I like, you know, in comparison. But now hearing him talk, it's like, what a dude, what a, what a, what a lovely human being. Like, so, um, there he is. Look, Russell, thanks for having me on, guys. An absolute pleasure. Russell, thank no, you so much, bud. Honestly. We will have, he loves a, a glass of wine. So we'll have a glass of wine in Wales somewhere. Um, yeah, fantastic. Brilliant. Love that. Yeah. And beautiful, beautiful comments off Russell. It's, it's, when we have people on you, you, you do, you want to talk about them so much, but it was just nice that he bounced it back to us, and we're very yeah, grateful yeah. for that. But you could tell, I think, straight away, we were like, oh, no, let's keep it on you, like, do you know what I mean? But, yes, the Castle gig. Um, let's bring in the boys, but before I do, let's let's have a little look at this, Shane.
<laughs> yes! <laughs> oh, take me back, boys. Ooh, really? Goose pimples. Ah, that was the right one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you played the video. I haven't got much recollection of it. How was it for you, Lido? Oh, man. How long we got? <laughs> no, it was incredible. It's the most, the most comfortable I've been on a stage since before COVID hit. Mm. Um, just as soon as those lights come up, just seeing that crowd, and it was like, fuck yes, this is why we do it, man. Yeah, This is why we do it. That connection was there. It was just, just so much love all around, man. So much love. Everybody was there for a good time, and that's what we had. We had a good time. Yes, we did. What about you, Devo? I was the most, well, it was the best best show I've ever done, I think. Um, there he is, man. Look at that. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> Dave, that's my line. There he is, uh, man. Um, No, I, I, yeah. In terms of everything, like the 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 crowd, the way we performed, um, the atmosphere, um, the everything, the vibe, just yeah, it just all it was all perfect. I think, you know. Hmm. I mean, nothing, you? nothing's ever perfect. Is it, it is. You know, never gonna expect everything to be absolutely perfect, but in terms of like how it felt, you know. Yeah. Yeah. What about yeah, you, Shino? Any words, Shino? I know. Yeah, say, I, I, as well, man. Yeah. I mean, what a setting for a, for a concert like fucking yeah. Cardiff Castle, boys. Yeah, it's absolutely. I seen the was was when awesome. I was a kid. Everyone was commenting on that one, and how such a stunning place it was. It was stunning weather. I just couldn't come fault there. Really, really couldn't fault there. What about you, Shane? There we go, man. <laughs> <laughs> but I was saying to you after, wouldn't it? I couldn't work out. Was it good, bad, indifferent? And, and I still can't. But then I was saying to Lloyd, you did. I haven't got much recollection of it. <laughs> like, I'm like, oh, yeah. And, and that's odd for me. Because yeah, I can generally I'm, remember everything. It's odd for you. usual for me. I can remember everything. <laughs> odd. But yeah, yeah, apparently it was good. <laughs> I don't know. Well, it's it's mad you're saying that, but because it was almost the opposite. Because there there are, there are gigs I have done where I'm just so in the moment that I'm I'm not really thinking about um, the performance singing. I'm just feeding off the crowd and stuff. And sometimes you're not you you don't do things in in the best manners of vocalists. You're not breathing right, so you're knackered or blah blah. But that night at the castle, there was this clarity, man. And I've never I don't think I've I don't think I've had that. I wasn't even particularly nervous. I just felt I just felt mm. ready. Mm. I, um, I don't know. It was so strange. I just felt at ease. And and I think, every, like Lloyd hit the nail on the head, everybody was there to see us and have a great time. So the pressure mm. wasn't like, I don't know, with the likes of another festival where you've got to keep competing with other bands or we're as good, blah, blah. You know what I mean? Not that we think that way, but... Maybe there is that element of pressure we got to perform, but even mm. though we were headlining, it didn't feel like there was a pressure to headline. It was just oh, no. we just got to go and do our thing, and this is going to be great. Yeah, and um, yeah. and with you, Lloyd, it felt like the easiest show, and and maybe did, that's man. just because it was meant to be. Like it was a really special gig. Yeah. So felt, cool. yeah, it did it did feel it did feel performance wise, it felt felt easy and relaxed and you know it was just not not just it yeah, just no, flowed the nerves weren't there mm. everything yeah. just flowed and it just it just happened it was yeah. a moment from start to finish it just worked and bringing up lynn parry's with this sorry to inter interrupt uh lloyd but it's on, uh, yeah, on yeah. The, sorry but it wasn't perfect it ended far too soon it was the longest gig that we've been able to play um yeah. and honestly no like anybody watching this or or listens to it down the line, there's been so many gigs where people go, you didn't play long enough. You didn't play long enough. And this gig, I genuine, like the, the whole camp when it buys was like, I think originally was like, oh, how long do you want to play for about an hour? Is it? We were like, no, as long as we can. Like, so I think we did an hour and a half. Yeah. Um, hour and a half minutes. I think so. Yes. Yeah. So, you know, it was, um, it was genuinely, 
to, to have Still support have bands, one. which we wanted, you know what I mean? It was, uh, we wanted to have um, and share the stage with a couple of people as well. And it was just, it's flew, didn't it, Lloyd? It was, you know, going back to what it was oh. just, just flew. It was, it, yeah, so start when you finish, that, it was... yeah, completely different to you. So when you write that set list out, and you're like, oh, that's a while. And then when you're on a stage, it's, it's just gone. Like, it's well, I can remember yeah. looking down at the set list, and then it was never win. I thought, oh, I, that's how I was about I got, to say, yeah. I got, I got to go off, yeah. So we yeah. went off, and then next thing you know, I'm back on, and then, then next thing you know, Ronnie's doing the snare drums Brah, for Rock and Rolling Dead. I'm like, what? Because I, I looked at Kev, who's on my right, our guitar tech, and I said, How long have we been up here? This is just flown. Yeah. It's, you know, what, how's this happened? Like, it's just gone. Like, but no, it was, well, it was just incredible. Everybody was there for a good time, man. Yeah. That's a great point, Anthony Suter just put up there. Um, I'm so impressed by the commitment of the Crow family that traveled so far to Cardiff to watch Susan Crows. It was incredible. We know there was another festival, Stone Dead, was happening. People were leaving there to come down to us. We'd met people earlier in the day in Cardiff that traveled from Scotland. I mean, it was just incredible, the amount of love and people just, yeah, the commitment coming down to see us in our, you know, capital. And because um, they knew it was going to be a special gig. And my God, they didn't, you know, it's all very well us performing on stage, but they performed, didn't they? They were just from, from yeah. minute, yeah, they were... second one. They were just that is like such oh. a big thing for as a performer, and it is a, a, is your crowd with you and, and, and the atmosphere with the crowd that's such a big part of it because you feed off it, don't you? You know, you it take is the good. energy from it, and then you just enhances your performance and it just snowballs into something special, you know? Yeah, and I think that's what happened, you know. It is because normally I did hold the whole um. On who did it, you always tell off the f how loud they sing, who did it, if they yeah. sing at all, when you hold the mic out. And but I, I knew even before when you boys go on first and I heard the roar, I was like, oh, we're, <laughs> set we're, we're set up here. This is here we go. <laughs> this is this is going to be incredible. Just knew it straight away. So thank you, Crow family, once again, and everybody that hadn't seen us because there was a lot of people there that hadn't seen us before, boys. And I'm yeah. saying some lovely things. Um, so yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, for coming there's a out. few people. Um, I'm just seeing now Shane just just echoing that again. Um, which is really it's mad. Like, like I just seen. I'm sure it's Rob, and I seen a couple of others just writing. That was the first time I watched to um, pop my crow cherry, and, and it's so mad because obviously because of Crowcast, we've been speaking to a lot of the, the 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 crow family for for 18 months now, however long however long this has been. Like you know, and um. It's, it's mad to think that was the first time they'd seen us or um, even the last couple of runs of gigs we've done. I know Steelhouse, there was a, a lot of people in Steelhouse who had never been to that festival and they were, they just wanted to come down because they'd never seen us and they'd been connecting with us via Crowcast. Um, yeah. So it's pretty amazing that is the, you know, that these are the first gigs for them. Like, um, and, and going back to what you said earlier, you know, there was people then from two, three years ago who'd seen us, supporting other bands up in Scotland who who travel down via either plane or 14 hour coach rides um because they just had to be a part of this because they'd seen us play to like 15 people um and now they they're seeing us you know headline in Cardiff Castle it's still sinking in I think with me I don't know about you boys it's um it's, it's still something at all keep unraveling I think for the next I don't know how many years like if that makes sense and keep because people are going to get older as well. And like even some of the youngsters there, which was incredible. I'm watching them tearful, like, you know, like the teenagers. And then it was youngsters who were just so ecstatic. It's just to be a part of their journey as well. Of oh, I remember my mom and dad or my sister or my uncle took me to a gig. Um, oh, it's just incredible. It's incredible. Yeah. It, it, what was it, your favourite moment, boys? Go on. That's what I was going to ask. Yeah. Start with you, Shane. Know. Well, oh. I, I, I got the raw thing from the video because because I had years in. I, I'm not hearing that, so that's the first time I actually I viewed that perception. Right. You, you know, so I, I'll go with that. Awesome. Go on in light. Oh. Right, it was sorry. that moment where you, Alice, Alice. <laughs> oh, the fuck is <laughs> You can't write that, can you? As I say <laughs> in the show. <laughs> Absolutely incredible. 
And let me tell everybody, because everyone was thinking, oh, turn your piano on. My piano was on, all right? Let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> it had nothing to do with me. Um, my, my sustain pedal wasn't plugged in. So those who don't play piano, when you hit the um, the keys, it just it doesn't... The sustain. They, oh, no. What are you doing here? Oh, I'm dreaming. Yeah, that... oh. <laughs> <laughs> dreaming. Um, and yes, yeah, so it wasn't plugged in, but there's a few sort of inputs in the back of the piano. So I was like, I can't see what is going in. So um, you got to pick the right hole. So uh, I needed a torch. <laughs> so I was like, uh, and Alice had a torch. So thank God for Alice. I put in the right hole in, and uh, <laughs> it was all good. But yeah, well done, Alice. <laughs> yeah, well done, Alice. Devo, what's your favorite bit? <laughs> no one this sticks out, but I always <laughs> say right, again. Yeah, sorry, so yeah, so the um, the second half of blink, blink, blink of an eye for me, blink of an eye. Yeah, the sort of um, the, the the peaks and the troughs of Blink of an Eye, the sing along bits, the the way it goes up and down. That, yeah, I, yeah, that for yeah. Me. special vibes. It was the correct. It was a correct kind of gig for that version of the song, wasn't it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Hi. What about you, Rono? Um, just I think what Shina said really. Um, it's the first gig we've done for a while where um just walking out and just the, the 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 first time it was ours like it was our it was our gig it was in the night there's just been so much build up to it and when you heard that that love that that roar from the crowd um during the intro and it was just like th this is tremendous i can't explain it like you know it just it just instantly felt special like you know and um it's really hard to explain that, but it just—I don't know—it just where you just feel like this is this is really this is going to be incredible. This is going to be incredible. And then when the lights went up, when you are you ready? I was like, holy shit! You know, it just—it was just beautiful. It was just all of that mixed in um, mm. in that first. I think that that's why that's perfect. That little light, light video over there because that that does capture where literally I was just like. This is incredible. And then the lights, you know, everything just kind of worked. And like I said, we haven't had that, uh, to my knowledge, especially outdoor, uh, indoor we have, but outdoor we haven't had that, that moment, like, you know, that that festival vibe, that event. Um, and considering it was put together in so many weeks, it's just tremendous all around, really, from... You know, big shout out to Rob from Phil, big shout out to Cardiff City Council, management, just everybody who was behind the scenes trying to sort stuff out. And then, you know, most importantly, the, the fans who travel to be part of that that special moment, like and buying the tickets, buying the merch. Um, yeah, just incredible, Shane. But all blent mm -hmm. into that that 30 seconds of walking out there and feeling that it all just kind of won't fit at me, like you know what I mean? So and then yeah. I just thought, oh, don't fuck it up. <laughs> <laughs> you bet. What, what was your special moment? <laughs> oh, there was, like I said, man, there was such clarity. There, there, there are several. I can, I can literally go through the set and pick a moment in several moments in the songs. Yeah. Um, they were obviously my family went, and I think it was the, they, they've never really seen the band in that sort of um, environment. So like their reaction and just like what is going on, you know, um, they had no real idea of, you know, the hard graft we put in, you know what I mean? To, seeing it yeah. in that, in that. Yeah. Um, so seeing their faces um, was incredible. Um, Blink was really special. Never win. I started on the, on never win and the crowd sang the first line. Like, you wouldn't believe, um, which was amazing. And also, all the way through the gig, there was this kid on his father's shoulders, boys, and he looked like a redhead um, Kurt Cobain. <laughs> he was just like, I don't know. I don't know how old he is, five, six maybe. Um, but he was just li living every moment, boys. Knew the songs word for word. And I just thought, there's the future of rock and roll. Like, it's in great hands. But um, 
And then um, his dad then, as he was going home, um, caught us backstage. I was like, oh, can you have a photo with him? And, and I had a photo with him. And he froze. He completely froze, love him. He went all stiff as a board. And he's like, what's the matter? You know, um, we had a photo, but it's Baxter. And I said I'd give him a shout out. So Baxter, thank you, dude. I was watching you every second. You were rocking as much as we were. Thank you, man. It was brilliant. Lush, boys. Lush. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. Also, um, when we went up to the castle and we had a couple of pics taken up there, and you could see everybody just coming in, and I think that's that was yet another another moment. Is just that it's that gig vibe, isn't it? Like we've been yeah. to gigs since we were kids. So, and then it's just that moment to go in. Oh fuck! They've opened the doors. Oh fuck! They come in to see us. <laughs> it's just the reality of everything. It's. It's overwhelming, like you know, because there's yeah, still that humbleness with us where we don't expect it. We, like you said, Shane, we work damn hard. Um, so it's just nice to see that it is paying off, like you know, it's and and they're paying us back 10 times as much, like if that makes sense, you know, it's um, it's really worth it, like you know, all the endless journeys, the the, the, the late nights of sacrifices with families, etc. It's um, moments like that, they, they live forever, don't I, like you know. I tell you yeah. one thing I couldn't get out of my mind. You know, you boys will get this. When you're up there and you're doing your thing, isn't it mad what pops in your head? Do you ever mm. get that? You get like these, like in Bradford, I, I was annoyed at myself because I didn't order a naan bread. Yeah, I told you that, haven't I? But, <laughs> <laughs> but this one, as soon as I seen Shane with that blow-up giraffe, it reminded yeah. me of the Toys R Us advert. Yeah, it's all under one yeah. roof. <laughs> yeah, okay. yeah. yeah. <laughs> I just couldn't get out of my head. Yeah. <laughs> Wonderful place, and we're on our way there. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, there's get tomorrow. My head. There's tomorrow's Photoshop in here. Lie down say Toys R Us with a naan bread. <laughs> with Jeffrey under one arm and naan bread. Yeah. <laughs> 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 That's brilliant, um, man. I love that. I, um, um, there was another the part where it's never happened before, and the old man has been popping in the head lately, boys. I think it's because we're playing gigs again, and and you know we're we're hitting crowds now that are you know incredible and that. But the old man has never seen us play like so. He's he was in my head. Now BU, I was playing BU, boom, flash of him, and I I had to come away from the microphone, and I had me, and you'd think it'd be like Blink or the slower ones, but it was on mm-hmm. BU. I was like, holy shit. Yeah, but as you said, Ron, they they um they the stories, their memories, there's something that's priceless, like you know, so it is, it's just worth more than anything, like you know, like I said, moments yeah. like that will they'll just live on, um, they'll surpass anything. Um it's just it's phenomenal. I the the phone hasn't stopped. Same with all of you, I know. Um, there's people who couldn't come who are so upset um that they weren't part of it, but Hopefully, I mean, to the ones who did come, you helped kick it on to the next level and the next level, and that's that's how it becomes. Mm. So, you know, the moments grow. Like, you know, that's the um, that's all I can really say to that is it, there'll be more special moments along the way. Yeah. Um, and and the merch, man. I mean, it was incredible hearing the stories of friends who were like, "Fucking hell." We're walking through Cardiff, and your merch is everywhere. There are people in pubs, restaurants, um, and it really had what I heard uh, like a Motley Crew vibe. Like you know, um, when Motley Crew come to the Motor Point or something, something of that caliber, mm-hmm. um, and and like all you can see is just the merch, the the true the 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 sheer dedication towards our band. Like you know, and. Um, Friends were coming back and seeing that, weren't they? In in messages, I, I think you boys were having them as well. It was just overwhelming yeah. for them. Yeah, yeah. Um, just to see us everywhere. There was just, you know, every corner had some sort of hoodie t-shirt, which was amazing. And and it was just, you know, it's a true essence of that the scene is alive. It's bullshit where people say, Oh, you know, no, it is, it, it's there, it's it's alive, and we felt it that night, like you know, and like I said, there were so many who couldn't be there, which was such a shame. Um, so we know that it's it's even bigger and and it's it's growing, it's 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 stunning. And watching everyone connect as well. That that's yet again, that's another magical thing. Um, seeing on the fan page, as I said, top of the show, um, anybody who's not on the fan page, please go and join it. Cause 
yet again, Cardiff Castles, a lot of people came on their own and they met up with other members. I don't want to name them, but other members of the Crow family. And they're all starting our photos together. And people who watch us rabble on on a Tuesday evening, um, mm. they're all connecting. They're all chatting away now and then they're meeting at gigs. It's just incredible, man. It's a real, it's a joy to watch. And as a music fan, personally, that's that's what we want. That's a fucking scene. Do you know what I mean? Everybody connecting and and champion what they believe in. Like you know, that's yet again you can't you can't buy that. Like it's incredible. Yeah, and and some people, but were were there at last minute because they didn't have tickets, they didn't get them in time, and then other people were like, oh, I can't make it because of so and so so and so, and they were just giving them away. Like they not even some of them weren't even asking for money, just saying. Um, here's my tickets, go to the show. So, uh, yeah, you're right, but the, the community is in absolutely insane. And um, but let it spread like wildfire because it's, well, it's a wonderful and beautiful thing. And uh, it's just incredible. I love it. Let's do it again next Sunday. Yes. Why not, Ned? Book us a Why castle. Not? Okay. <laughs> I, I tell you what, oh, I am Castle's loving a castle. Well, yeah. I am. I, I know it's a cheap plug and a cheap pop, like, but... Um, there's like literally a handful of tickets left for this, guys. I know it's a, a, a segue. This is Chepstow 2022. Um, those damn crows, Mason Hill, Florence Black, Tribless, James and the Cold Gun, Chepstow Castle, Thursday, August the 11th, 2022. But I am genuinely loving a castle. I thought it was <laughs> such a, it was such cool, a yeah. cool. All right, we should replay really cool castles from now on. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> do you know what a lot of the crow family were saying that dave yeah. you reckon we'll once talk. a year castle we should we'll always talk. yeah we should always play a castle every year oh, once like, a year you know, definitely so. margham castle margham park yeah, Get out yeah they, have, they have shows there don't they Caffilly castle i heard somebody yeah. saying that um yeah this, Oric this, castle. yeah why why just you like you know let's let's get let's get the castles on the go like when, you know and raven castle shane yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I, got, I got dismantled years ago. <laughs> it's in America somewhere now. Uh, it's just uh, a brick in a field. Okay, yeah. it's just, uh... <laughs> See, hey, there we go. Uh, Coity Castle, maybe. Oh, oh, you never know. Get a new castle. On my doorstep, that is. That'll uh, that'll be a nice easy one. I will stroll home, like. Yeah, well, they're doing they're doing a lot of work there as well. Um, Building our stage cool. now. Fucking Cadu lover, so why? Yeah, but yeah, I'd be definitely up for playing more castles. Yeah, bring man. on the castles. <laughs> it's great. Like, hey, we're, we're, playing, castle. We're, playing, we're playing we're playing Newcastle. <laughs> yeah, we're playing Win Newcastle. Get in Windsor Castle now. Do do the uh, gig for the Queen, like. <laughs> oh, yeah. Are you fucking ready? <laughs> He's one ready. He's one oh. ready. <laughs> Loads of corgis knocking about. I'd be loving that. Oh. <laughs> Tremendous. Tremendous. Um, and yes, uh, I'm having it. In the year, there is not many of these left now. So thanks to everyone who's bought them tonight as well. And they are literally nearly gone. So that's it. And uh, incredible. And that yeah, moves you. Go on, Shane. No, go on, but sorry. No, I was going to say that merch kit was just phenomenal. Just absolutely phenomenal. Yeah, I was just going to say, for anybody that missed the start of the show, um, basically everything that's on the merch stall in Cardiff is now online. So um, if you missed it or couldn't be bothered to queue up, but I don't blame you because the queue was massive, um, it is now available online. So you can get all that that Ronnie's showing you right there. Right yeah, well, now. A few, a few didn't realise we had ODs as well. Um, Ooh, that's yeah, that's nice what I'm getting messaged as well, and this one a lot of people didn't realize that this existed, uh, which is the I didn't one. actually, <laughs> and it's genuinely one of my favorite t shirts. I do love that's that. Awesome, Rock yeah. and Rolling Dead, um, well, that's Mark at Asylum 77 did that, didn't he? Yeah, man, yes, yeah, that's yeah. a big shout out. Well done, Dave, well done, yeah, and you. uh, you know, Bucket Hat, it was brilliant to see them around as yeah. well. <laughs> um it just is magical, man. It's just so magical. Like you can't, you can't have an outdoor weird. gig, like a festival, without people wearing bucket hats. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry, but brilliant. Right, I got a few birthdays and shout outs, boys. Cool. 
Okay, um, we'll start with Sandy K. Hey, Crows, I want to send Sarah Mitchell a massive thank you for her spare ticket. She generously gave us to me and my pal Donna for the Cardiff gig. It was lovely meeting and hanging out with Sarah at the gig. The gig was truly awesome. First time for my friend as well. So thank you once again, Sarah. Love, Sandy. See? That's awesome. Uh, Andrea Batty, it's your birthday today. Happy birthday, Andrea. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Julie Langdon, it's your birthday today. Happy birthday, Julie. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, Clay Wilcox. It's your birthday today. Happy birthday, Clay. Happy, Happy birthday. birthday, Rocky Mia. It's your birthday today. Happy birthday, Rocky. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, Happy birthday. <laughs> <laughs> Happy birthday to Lynette Hill. It's your birthday today. Love from Donna Morgan. Happy birthday, Lynette. Happy, Happy birthday. birthday. Happy birthday. Carly Cook, it's your birthday tomorrow. Hope you have the best day, Carly. Have a great day. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. And that's all the birthday shout outs. So for the winner, it's basically anything you want off the merch stall, and that's quite exciting considering it's all new merch. Mm. So the lyric is, can't stop digging deeper. Can't stop digging deeper. What's the next line? Go. Go. When should go, as the Queen would say. <laughs> go on, then. Eh? Go. You won't get it. Well, then, Dave. Yeah. How would the Queen say it? Uh, well, off with their heads. <laughs> in 1500. <laughs> Alex Wonderland, yeah. yeah. Andrew, you were a naughty boy. <laughs> How would the Queen oh. say it in a Swedish accent, Dave? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Crow Radio, Crow Radio. Come on. How would the Queen say it in a Swedish accent, David? Uh, yeah. Yeah, um, <laughs> the uh, I, I River. used to own you, but now I don't. You are now an independent country. There we go. While we wait, while we wait for the answer, let's do a bit of crew radio. The best, the best, the best, the best music all day long. Crow Radio. Crow Radio. Available now via those damn crow Spotify page. Don't forget to click the green heart. <laughs> Here we are then. Can you see my screen? Oh man, hang on, sorry. I'm still in Sweden. Go Can on. you see my screen? <laughs> I'm still in Sweden. <laughs> <laughs> Dave took me here then, Shane. He took me there. They took you to Sweden. I've never been. I'd like to go to Sweden. Very expensive, apparently. But it's I thought you nice. were going to do the Wayne's World sketch then, Dave. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Jürgen Klurgen from the Jürgen Fjords, whatever it is. <laughs> Come on, right, Dave. Crow so, Radio. Crow Radio. Back on track. Crow Radio. Um, we've gone with the castle theme because of all the castle talk, you know? So now yeah. some of these aren't really anything to do with castles, but it doesn't matter because they're all good songs, so fuck it. You wouldn't have had guns at castles. You wouldn't have had guns at castles, would you? Because because you don't have guns in medieval times. Anyway. You had cannons, didn't you? So they, <laughs> they, 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 so they gunpowder fall. wasn't invented until the 1800s, was it? Ask Guy Fawkes, but he tried blowing Parliament up. Yeah. Anyway. Anyway. <laughs> it's not got too bogged down in history, should we, right? <laughs> about the music. So it's always been about the music. Okay, so Track one, Arrows by uh, not good friends, but hopefully in the future good friends, Foo Fighters. <laughs> <laughs> Knights of Sidonia, is that right? Yeah, Muse. Muse. Scream, Aim, Fire by our friends, Bullet for my Valentine. Invaders, the first song, I think, isn't it, from um, Number of the Beast, Iron Maiden, Castles in the Sand, Thunder. 
Castle's made of sand, Jimi Hendrix, who made an appearance. Jimmy Boy. Set, didn't he? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh. All Good Soldiers by Bad Ridley John. Throne, Bring Me the Horizon. Var Pigs, Black Sabbath. Trampled Underfoot, Led Zeppelin. 68 Guns, The Alarm. Crazy Horses. Ah! The Osman. <laughs> <laughs> Cannonball, Damien Rice. Knights in White Satin by the Dickies. So that isn't the Knights in White Satin that everyone's familiar with. Ah, uh, right. That's what I was laughing at earlier yeah. when you said that. Yeah, it's Knights. Yeah, yeah, the Dickies. That's like a punk punk song. Yeah, yeah. Really never really thought of that. that. Dickies are good. Um, Castles of Glass, Lincoln Park. Back in the days, because castles were back in the days, weren't they? Bad wolves. <laughs> and everything I do, I do a few. Bright Adams because of the Robin Hood connection. So very varied again, people. But there's nothing wrong with that. That, was a, like that, very that last one was a loose one. Fair play. Just because <laughs> <in> what's <laughs> that now? <laughs> Bright Adams just because the video was in a castle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was in Robin Hood, wasn't it? <laughs> it was right. <laughs> Medieval <laughs> times. Fucking really struggling well, towards the end of that set list there. That's brilliant. What are the crew family trying to tell you, David? They're telling me to tell they're telling you to tell me to tell you to tell them. Why am I telling them if they already know? Ah, because there might be some people watching or listening going, I don't know what to do now. What do I do if I want to listen to that? Right, so if you if you go to then. Spotify and open the instructions, read the instructions, I'll tell you what to do. <laughs> <laughs> now um, click the green art if you want to download it to your library click the little downwards facing arrow if you like it that much and also share it with your friends why not innit? that's what it's about well I thought that's quite a rather fun playlist I do it's turned it's a out playlist, a banger yeah. actually there's, there's a lot of awesome tunes on there like do you know what I mean seeing them coming in today there's, uh, it's great absolutely brilliant that one like yeah. Sorry, but in there, Derek has asked, was Kev at the castle gig? And I'm missing his videos and antics. Yeah, he was um he was my little my little guy. He was sitting next to me. He was um I was smiling at him, he was smiling at me, he was passing me he beers when I wanted them. <laughs> it's quite funny because there's a photo of me going around on social media and I'm back like that. My hair's you know the one, Shane. The one I'm it's when I'm like... photobombing. Yeah. yeah, but honest honestly, Pat, right? That wasn't a pose. That was me having a laugh at Kev, trying to see him upside down. <laughs> like, <laughs> I could have ended badly. Yeah. Like, uh, <laughs> amazing. I was looking at him, going like, ah, all right. Trying to do the crown. Amazing. <laughs> Brilliant. Pet. Yeah, Kev was there. He was there, yeah, he was there. He trusty, my trusty sidekick. Yeah. Yeah. So, says the one person like, who doesn't have a guitar change. Yeah, no. Yeah, <laughs> he's, there, he's there, isn't he? You know, he's some yeah, he, he, he needs to be looked well. after. This guy, yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he, goes, he needs to be wrong. minded, <laughs> <laughs> just in case. You know. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah he gives me my, he hands me my beer. So that's that's he's basically my barman. Ah, oh, right. My personal barman he is. <laughs> Get him a little cocktail suit, I think, next. He'll go try and he'll be side stage, I guess. <laughs> I don't think he'd be too happy about that. With, with like, a, like a thing thrown over his arm. Can I get you, governor? <laughs> <laughs> Claude the guitar tech, like. <laughs> <laughs> Love you, Kev. Love you, bud. Uh, have we got a winner, Shane? Yes, <clears throat> we have. Excellent. Um, so the lyric was can't stop digging deeper. This is obviously sort from Send the Reaper, and the line that follows is won't stop the soul keeper. Lots of people had this right, but the first one that we can see was Shelly Scarrett. Congratulations, Shelly. <laughs> Tell us what you want from the merch stall and size and your address, and we'll get that out to you ASAP. Thank you so much. <laughs> So go on in, but castle themed, right? This is castle theme. Might as well stay stay with it. 
but I did notice the last um, cat themed one I did went down well. So I've combined the two. So how did he do that? Are you asking? Well, I'll tell you. <laughs> no one no. <laughs> no one is. Literally no one gives a shit. Get him off. Get him off. Ooh, tell us a joke we know. <laughs> oh, I have to read this one because it's quite long, right? So yeah, if you put your you code on the on the on the wall. As she comes now, right? <laughs> Cats were used in the sieging of castles, right? So what the attackers would do, they'd light little cat backpacks filled with kindling and send the cats into the castle where they take refuge because they were like, oh, come on fire. <laughs> and they usually go into they usually go into a barn or a little place and they'd and they'd subsequently or not they'd end up end up setting the castle on alight. Burning down parts of the castle. So what by doing that, if would the cats die as well? Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. Maybe I'll like it. Yeah. <laughs> you fucking leave me out to this. So if you look up, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like they got uh, rockets on their back. Yeah, that's the you know lot. You're saying you're correct because if you search <laughs> cat rockets, that's what comes up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. oh, bloody hell. <laughs> now, I love cats, so I wouldn't want Ooh, to any harm to cut the cats. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, thing. <laughs> 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 That's a new backdrop. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Dave, you should get that made as wallpaper for yourself. Yeah, do you know uh, what? Yeah, like a do rake cover or something. Catapult. Oh, uh, good god. But yeah, I mean, you know, apparently that was something they used to do. I mean, that's here we are. Now, before the RSPCA was established, I suspect. <laughs> 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 but uh yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> oh. oh that's brilliant that's you'll all be pleased to know no cat was hurt in the making of this feature not this yes. feature but in the in the siege of many castles if you go to castles you support an <laughs> animal cruelty <laughs> claire who's my cat's run out the room <laughs> <laughs> was there a rocket in it? Uh, that would be catastrophic. <laughs> All the cat puns are coming out now, aren't they? <clears throat> that, was well brilliant. Done, that was a good one, I was. Yes, Dave, well done. You're Absolutely welcome. well done. Not even one bollocks because everybody just thought that was brilliant. So well done. That's probably the first time ever that's happened. Yeah. yeah. That is absolutely awesome. Well done. Well done, Dave. I love that. Cancel, <laughs> What's that? Cancel the cat, castle tour. Ah, oh, brilliant. Little cat oh, boys, cat boys, cat. boys. I have missed, I've made a terrible mistake here. Mm -hmm. We forgot to mention the birthday shout outs for Debbie Turner. <gasps> Debbie, oh, how no. dare we? She's literally I mean... just texted me now. Do I not get a birthday shout out? And literally the blood ran from my head. <sighs> how dare we? Debbie, hope you've had a great birthday, lovely. I know it was a big one. We saw you Happy there. Birthday. Happy, Happy birthday. birthday. Happy, Happy birthday. Happy birthday. And better late than never. Exactly. I got to, I, I got to work on that one, but better late than never. Sorry, Debbie. You know, that's uh, Shiner's one liner. <laughs> the price of one this week. <laughs> I mean, for all didn't we say it last week? Uh, better earlier than never as well, then. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think we did see it. Do it the, twice. Yeah, I think we did. So that's double. There we go. Prem, prem yeah, double whammy. yeah, we'll forget it next year. That's fantastic. Right. Uh, before we sign off, guys, um, yeah, just a quick reminder the merch is now live. Uh, look at them, Rock and Rolling Dead. The Crow Family t shirt has landed, that is now available online. Bucket at to our last couple of castle t shirts are left. No more will be printed. Uh, lyric tees, new hoodie, unbelievable. And next week, we 
Ah, uh, yeah, it is next week. Blinking heck, time is just flying, isn't it? We hit the road with the wild arts, and a quick reminder: we are not doing Bristol. I apologise. Um, bit of a mix-up. Uh, some tragic news with the venue. Um, we wish the guys the best of luck where they kick it off in Dover, I think, or unless they're playing before then. Um, and then, obviously, we will meet them uh, on the 8th in Manchester. Is that correct, boys? Yep. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. our first show is the 8th. September the 8th, we will be in Manchester, which is mm. fantastic. Which was the, the venue we played last time we were there, wasn't it? Oh, the yep. headline floor. That was when our point of no return got released on that day. Mm. That's right. Then I went to go. That was probably the first time we got tequila at the bar. Mm. Yes. Yeah. Wow. That started that trade, didn't it? No, yeah. Rockstock. When we came oh, in to fill in for Rockstock. Ah, right. That Ooh. was Kev's first show with us. And speaking of Rockstock, Lloyd, well done. Um, yet again, these four dates in November. And that is it for the calendar of 2021 then. Um, so, you know, we start in Derby, straight up to Inverness, down to Sheffield, and then end at Rockstock. Well done, Lloyd Wood. Mm. Um, but you, you can get all that info anyway at www.thosedamncrows.com. Everything is in one place. And over to you. Ladies and gentlemen. One liner, shiner, shiner, shiner. <laughs> Still haven't found a new photo one. <laughs> I was thinking exactly the same thing. <laughs> uh, great minds, David. Uh, great minds. Mm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, then. So we got don't let anyone who hasn't been in your shoes tell you how to tie your own laces. Oh, that's a beautiful one. That's oh. a really good one, Shane. Oh. Yes. Especially if they move yeah. on. You could take that yeah. to the back. Yeah. Unless you're wearing Crocs. <laughs> All right. Yeah. All right. Or wellies. Or wellies. Or and... Velcros. Or slip-ons. <laughs> or gel <laughs> shoes. Time to go, boys. Round in my boat, but just go. <laughs> <laughs> but that was a great one. Well done, Shino. <laughs> Crow family, thank you so much. Everybody that came to the uh, Cardiff Castle show is truly a memorable gig. It will stay with us forever. Thank you so much for sharing that moment with us. This has been Crowcast episode 75 with Russell Gilbrook. Watch out for the midweek announcement for our special guest next week. And we'll see you all again next Tuesday, live at nine on Crowcast episode 76. Stay safe, Crow family, and look after each other. No star. I'm not giving up. I'm not giving up.